Hey guys, it's Sarah, and today I'm bringing to you a tier ranking video of all the romance books I've read in 2020. I have not done a reading wrap up in almost two years. They actually used to be my favorite video to film, and then somewhere along the way I just uh, lost all consistency and I have stopped telling you guys about the books I'm reading every month, but I haven't stopped reading and I wanna share that with you guys. I thought a tier ranking video would be a really fun way to get you guys up to speed on some of the stuff I've been reading because I've read about 30-ish books this year and half of those have been romance. So I thought, why not talk about all the romance books together, let you guys know the good, the bad, the ugly. I know I am super late to the tier ranking trend. I think people have been doing these videos for most of 2020. I think Riley from Riley Marie even did a romance one like last week. It's okay, I just thought this would be really fun to do because last video I actually asked you guys what I should film and one person said they'd love to see me do one of these. So this is for you, thank you for asking for it. Before we get started, I do wanna say that this video is being sponsored by Ana Luisa. I was super excited when they reached out to work with me again because I absolutely love their jewelry and I'm not just saying that, like I truly have been wearing their jewelry nonstop since the last time I worked with them. What I love about Ana Luisa is their exceptional quality of their jewelry. I actually am pretty allergic to a lot of metals, especially in earrings. Like my ears get super infected if I wear cheap things. Another really exciting thing about them is the last time I worked with them, they said they were working towards being carbon neutral in 2020 and they actually have achieved that. They are 100% carbon neutral, which is super exciting because I feel like they are a sustainable brand that really values quality jewelry, but also values having fair prices. I think all of their items start at $39, which is really great, especially for the noble metals that they're using. I chose two pairs of earrings and a necklace for this video and I absolutely love them. I've been wearing these earrings nonstop. I have these like teardrop hoops and then a smaller little tiny kind of like chain link shaped hoop. They're just so cute and I actually just got my second holes pierced I want to say like three or four months ago and so I paired these bigger hoops with the like tinier hoops that kind of almost look like a little oval shape. For the necklace I chose this little medallion. I love the hammered look of it and it's just the perfect length for me and I feel like I can wear it with so many things. My favorite way to style the earrings like I said is to stack them together and the necklace pretty much goes with everything. Annalisa is actually currently running a Black Friday sale. So if you follow my link down below, it will lead you to that. And like I said, the prices start at $39. So it's really affordable jewelry, especially for what you're getting. It would really make an amazing gift for anyone in your family. It just, they're so cute. I love them. And I'm really happy that I got to work with them again. So let's get into ranking these romance books. The highest and most honored tier that we have is That'll Make Your Pussy Throb. That'll make your pussy throb. I was lit. I was literally going to say that made my pussy throb. <laughs> that is um, exactly what it sounds like. This is romance books that just really take you to really good places, both emotionally, mentally, and perhaps physically. Our second highest tier is Big Dick Energy. This is for books that were very good, but there's just something about them that didn't take them to that top tier, but they have the Big Dick Energy. They're bringing a lot to the table. The next tier is I liked the beat. Definitely, I thought it was fun. I liked the beat. Which basically just means books that, you know, they're like three stars. They're not anything to write home about, but they are decent. You know, we won't say they were bad, but they just weren't amazing. Our second worst tier is It's a No From Me Dog. Uh, it's a no for me dog. This basically just means books that, uh, they weren't horrible. Like, they were like bad. They were like two stars, but they weren't like the worst thing I ever read, but they definitely don't deserve to be any higher than where they're at. And then lastly, our very worst tier is Disgusting. Disgusting. This category is reserved for books that uh, just, I wish I hadn't read. They weren't good. They did not make my pussy throb. I did not like the beat. I did. It's a no from me, dog. It's just all of, it's a lot of no and it's disgusting, you know? Now that we have the categories out of the way, let's just get into ranking this bitch. Uh, the books are in no particular order. I just kind of put them into the app. And if you see me looking down at all in these shots, it's because I'm looking at the tier ranking. But yeah, let's just get into it. First off, we're starting with a bang. We're starting with Beach Read. That's immediately gonna go into That'll Make Your Pussy Throb. Beach Read was one of the best books that I have read honestly ever. Like I really loved that book. I read it all in one sitting, which is a big deal for me because I don't really do that anymore. I know that I've talked about Beach Read in a couple of other videos. I haven't really posted that many videos this year. So in the few that I've posted, I have talked about Beach Read. But it was basically about this girl that goes to a beach house for the summer because she inherits it from her father right after he passed away. And she realizes that he has a lot of secrets that he was hiding before he died. And while she's there, she moves in next to a guy that actually is her rival from grad school. She is an author and so is he. 
he, and he writes literary fiction and she writes romance. And then they challenge each other to write each other's genres. They basically go on these dates where he'll take her on research things to show her how to write literary fiction. And then he, she takes him on like really cute date things like going to carnivals and the movies and like that kind of cute stuff. Really cute. It's also really steamy. Uh, the writing style is perfection. It's just, it's so good. It will make your pussy throb. Next up, we have Entreat Me by Grace Draven. This is definitely a big dick energy book. It was very good. It is a Beauty and the Beast retelling and I just love her writing style. She has this perfect way of incorporating like fantasy, but also romance and smut together. So it's very plot driven, but it's also very like all the things that you'd want from a romance. And like I said, this one is a Beauty and the Beast retelling and it's just, so good, so good. Don't mind me reading all of Grace Draven's books. Next up, we have The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. And I'm gonna put this in, I liked the beat. Um, it was just okay. Like, I actually don't remember a lot about it. This is one of the first romances I read this year. I think I read it in like March or April and just, it didn't hit for me. It, it didn't, I don't know. It's very not memorable. I was gonna say not forgettable, but that's a double negative. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying it wasn't memorable. It wasn't good. I did not like it. It was okay. Well, I liked the beat. It was fine. I don't want to be too hard on it. Next up, we have Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. And I'm going to have to put this in It's a No for Me, Dog. I know that's very controversial to do because I know so many people love this book. And don't get me wrong. It got me into reading Talia Hibbert and I like Talia Hibbert. I just didn't love this particular book. There was something about the writing that just didn't resonate with me. I will admit, I loved the plus size representation and I loved the disability representation because the main character suffers from um, a disability that makes her have to work from home and she is really fatigued a lot of the time. There was something about the way that the sex scenes was written that it just, like they kept saying things like, I wanna put my cock in your pussy. And don't get me wrong, I love a good sex scene, but there was just, um, it didn't, it made me, I don't know, made me feel gross when I was reading it. It also could have been the audiobook narrator because in my opinion, she sounded a lot older, like she had an older voice. And so when she would narrate the guy character's voice from his perspective, she would, like the way she would do his voice, she would just be like, I wanna put my cock in your pussy. No, that's not what it sounded like. <laughs> I'm gonna cut that out. I'm gonna cut that out, no. Anyway, the point is I didn't love the sex scenes and Overall, just not my favorite Talia Hibbert book. Next on the list, we have The Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren. And regrettably, I'm gonna also have to put that in It's a No From Me Dog. It just was not Christina Lauren's best book. I think the premise of that one is about this girl who's like the assistant to this woman who does a, um, like a home improvement show. It's kind of like Chip and Joanna, Joanna Gaines. <laughs> Chip and Joanna Gaines. I cannot speak this evening. The main character is the assistant to the woman. The guy love interest becomes the assistant to the husband. They are like kind of enemy, enemy, enemies? Enemies to lovers. <laughs> Am I okay? Regardless, it was kind of boring. It, I didn't really like the plot. It also was only told from the girl's perspective, which I always prefer the Christina Lauren books that are told from both perspectives. I just think that they read a lot better. Next, we have Lesson in Thorns by, I don't remember who it's by, but, and I can't read it on this little cover. Um, but um, unfortunately, uh, again, this is also controversial. I'm gonna have to put it in Disgusting. I just did not like that book. I think I gave it, two stars maybe, but only because it has a little bit of a mystery in it and I really liked the mystery, but overall that was not my cup of tea. And also just saying, me putting it in disgusting is not me saying anyone who likes this book is disgusting. That's just how I felt when I read it, which I will say what I liked about the book is that it was very educational about BDSM. Like I feel like the author did a very good job of explaining why people enjoy BDSM, what BDSM is all about. I definitely, I mean, I don't know this for sure about the author, but the way it was written made me think that she's probably in that kink as well. And so I found that to be very educational, really cool. It was similar to Get a Life, Chloe Brown, where the way the sex scenes were written, <laughs> were way too graphic for me. I just, they're just not for me. Like I have this way where it's like, I like my sex scenes to be very particular. Like I want enough detail, but not too much detail. Like I hate cum, not to say that in a video on YouTube, but I hate cum and I don't like to hear about cum. I don't want to see cum. I don't want to talk about cum. And so there was just, there was a lot of cum in this book in particular. I feel like I just said the word come way too much in this video. Definitely gonna get demonetized. A lot of people who reviewed this book said it was erotica and I was like, oh yeah, 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 erotica. But I was thinking just like a normal smutty romance book and then I read it and I was like, oh, they meant this is porn. Next up we have Love In Other Words by Christina Lauren. This is going to go in disgusting. I really didn't like this. This may be my least favorite Christina Lauren book that I have ever read. It was just boring as shit. I did not like it and I didn't like the main characters at all. I think this one 
was also only told from the main female perspective. Like I said, I feel like when Christina Lauren does that, it's not as good. I have read a lot of Christina Lauren books and I've been thinking about doing a video that's kind of like a guide to which of their books are worth your time and which ones aren't. So if you are interested in that video, please let me know down below. The next book we have is One to Watch by Kate Stamen London. And this is gonna go in I Liked the Beat. I really liked this book for two reasons. Number one, the main character is plus size and I really liked that depiction of her. And number two, it basically reads like a season of The Bachelorette. The reason it's only going in this like mid tier is because I didn't love the ending. I also will say that if you're looking for a book where the main character already loves her body and is already super body positive, this definitely isn't it. It's a lot more about like her journey accepting herself and you know being criticized online I will give you you know a trigger warning for there's a lot of fat phobia in it and not necessarily from her I mean there's a little bit of internalized but it's a lot of like external people saying things about her because she's on a reality show next we have radiance by Grace Draven this is also going in the big dick energy category I really really enjoyed this this was actually the first Grace Draven book that I ever read and it's basically like a friends to lover book about this woman and this guy where they're kind of like nobles but they're not like the main nobles what's the word like he's the spare son and then she's just like a maiden and basically they get married off because they're from these um different kingdoms and it kind of would form an alliance between them and like good faith for them to get married but he is from like a different alien race i can't remember what he, they're called but he has like blue skin and then she's human what i'm trying to say is that because they're not the same species they're first grossed out by each other so they start out as friends and then they slowly grow to become lovers and it's very sweet and very cute it definitely made me rethink you know only ever wanting to read enemies to lovers i feel like I, i've been sleeping on friends to lovers as a trope it was really good next up we have the right swipe by alicia ray and um, I'm trying to think of where I put this. I would either put this in It's a No For Me Dog or I Liked the Beat. I'm trying to think where would I put it? I think I'm gonna put it in I Liked the Beat because I overall enjoyed myself when I was reading it. I don't know, maybe I would put it in It's a No For Me Dog. No, no, I don't feel the same way about it as I do the Honey Don't List and Get a Life Chloe Brown. I feel okay about it. Next up we have Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert and this is going in Big Dick Energy. I definitely liked this way more than Get a Life Chloe Brown. I think this is the second installment in Talia Hibbert's series. Basically all the characters in these books are sisters and they're just so much fun. Overall I love them. Chloe was actually in this book and I liked seeing her but I just didn't love her standalone book. I liked this one so much more. Danny was just such a likable character to me. She was just like this bisexual queen that was just amazing and the guy in this book ugh, he was so sweet. Next we have This Is How You Lose the Time War, which some of you might be surprised to see on this list. It's not necessarily only a romance. It's really a sci-fi novella, but it's so romantic and sapphic and just, mm -hmm, I just felt like it needed to be on this list. And this definitely goes in That'll Make Your Pussy Throb. It is some of the most beautiful writing I've ever read, but it's just so good. Uh, what I love about it is that it's not very long. Cause like I said, it's a novella and the writing is really poetic and beautiful and kind of hard to understand and there's not a lot of world building because the book is so short at first i almost dnf because i was really confused about what i was reading um but basically it's about these time travelers that are on opposing sides of a war and they start writing each other letters throughout time but the more you read the more you kind of understand the world and understand this war that they're fighting and both the time travelers are women and so it's sapphic and it's just so Beautiful, I love it. Next up, we have Twice in a Blue Moon by Christina Lauren. I'm gonna put that in, it's a no for me dog. This is another Christina Lauren book where they only wrote it from the female perspective and I don't like their books that do that. It's just not good. Next we have The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa and this is going to go in, uh, it's either gonna go in it's a no for me dog or I like to be trying to decide. How do I feel about it in comparison to the books and it's a no for me dog. Thinking, thinking, thinking. I think I'm gonna put it in I liked the beat. It wasn't amazing by any means, but I didn't feel a lot of negative feelings towards it. The sex scenes were good in this one, but he kept calling her like honey and babe and sweetie when they were having sex and that's a no-go for me. Like, <clears throat> the last two books on this list are actually ones that I DNF'd and uh, the first one is Iced by Karen Marie Moaning, which is a continuation of the Dark Fever series and um, 
Not good, not good. I'm gonna put that in disgusting. There's a reason I DNF'd it. So it takes place like a few years after the ser the last series left off. And the main character is this girl named Danny who was in the other series. And she is only like 15 in this series, but all these grown ass men like want her like sexually in this book. And it's really creepy. And I could already tell that the writing wasn't gonna be the same as the Dark Fever series. And I was like, you know what? I just want the Dark Fever series to live, you know, kindly in my memory because I really loved that series. It was one of my favorites from last year. So I was like, let's not finish this. And it's just like, we're gonna leave it at disgusting. <laughs> Lastly, we have Roomies by Christina Lauren, and I don't know what Christina Lauren was doing with these all these books that I read from them, but it's it's disgusting again. I DNF'd it. It was probably the worst Christina Lauren book I've ever read. I actually think I said that about Love in Other Words, but I take that back. I mean that about Roomies. I, uh, it's so weird because Roomies was actually the first Christina Lauren book that I'd ever heard of from like everyone on booktube and everybody was like, it's so good. But again, it's written only from the girl's perspective. I don't need, I can't even tell you more beyond that because I did not, I think I read only like, the first quarter of this book and I did not like it. I did not like the main character at all. But yeah, that brings us to the end of this tier ranking video. Let me know down below if you enjoyed this, if you'd wanna see me do this with the rest of the books I read this year. Like I said, I think I've read around 30-ish books. So I think I've got like 16 to 18 more books to talk about if you wanna hear about those. Um, they fall into some other categories. Surprisingly, I've not read a lot of YA this year. I've mostly read adult books, like adult romance and thrillers and that sort of thing. So let me know if you wanna see more of that later. Thank you again to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video. Like I said, there'll be a link down below if you wanna check out their Black Friday deals. Super exciting, absolutely love their jewelry. Like I'm not kidding, I wear it all the time and I wear the jewelry that I got in the last video as well. Also, let me know down below any other videos that you guys would like to see from me. I know I have not been consistent in posting for like the last like two and a half years, but I promise that I am gonna be posting in December all of my end of the year books. Those are my favorite videos to film, letting you guys know my favorites, my least favorites of the year and my reading habits and goals and all of that stuff. So look forward to that. Um, but like I said, if there's any other ideas or anything else you guys wanna see from me, let me know down below. I hope you guys are having a really good November and that you'll have a safe Thanksgiving. And thank you all so much for watching. You're all beautiful. Have a nice day. So long. Searching for bases, covering up the hole I'll fight for your love, I'll fight for your soul oh.